Okay, hi everyone. Uh, welcome back. We are going through uh, the last part of this handout uh, for question 7 and question 8. Okay, so question 7, you have a transmitter sending a sound, receiver X detects a sound 0 0.4 seconds. Okay, and uh, detector Y detects a sound 1.2 seconds. So there's a difference in the design. Lah. Okay, so uh, what is the meaning of refraction of wave? Uh, of course, the keyword for refraction of waves is the bending okay, of the sound waves lah, or the changing of the direction of sound waves. So it will be the bending of sound waves after passing through uh, mediums okay, with different densities okay uh, this is if it is general waves uh, okay waves in general uh, if you're talking about specific uh, wave uh, uh, like light wave yeah let's just assume light is a wave uh, so talking about light waves uh, then you have to tweak this definition a little bit lah. okay uh, so oh sorry this shouldn't be sound just bending of waves. So if it is a light wave, you want to add the word bending of light waves after passing through mediums with different optical densities. Okay, so because when you're talking about light waves, uh, the reason why uh, the waves change direction, the way the reason why the wa uh, waves change uh, speed is because of the optical density. La. Okay, not uh, yes, not so much the density, but more on the optical density. So this is only if we're talking about uh, uh, light wave but since now we're talking about sound wave in general because it's a transmitter everything so we don't really have to put the word optical density la. okay so the second question is uh, the speed of sound in the oil layer is 1500 meters per second uh, and then you're asked to calculate the total time for the sound signal to travel through the oil layer la. okay so notice uh, that actually there are two receivers over here okay so the first receiver receives this one Okay, the which is the reflection lah. Okay, and then the second receiver after it goes through the refraction and then you know it goes back up here lah. So assuming uh, that uh, because it says here that this is one point zero point four seconds. Okay, so if this whole thing oh sorry, uh, let me start undo. Okay, so if this red color part is 0 0.4 seconds after transmission means one way is 0 0.2 seconds lah. so we can say that this one is 0 0.2 seconds okay now then of course the time difference here okay the time difference here as you can see is 1.2 and 0 0.4 okay so there's a time difference of 0 0.8 seconds altogether because if this is 0 0.4 the whole thing uh, from here, sorry, from here to here is 1.2. La. Okay, so if this up here is 0 0.4, that means down here is 0 0.8. Okay, which means that the total time for the sound signal to travel through the oil layer is this one, 0 0.8 seconds. Okay, because the whole thing is 1.2 and then the this one is 0 0.4. Okay, so uh, just through the oil layer, la, okay, it will be 0 0.8 seconds. Okay, just minus only. La. Then, of course, the thickness of the layer, you have to count the, the formula V equals to Vt over 2. If you have V1500, the time is 0 0.8 and then divide by 2. Okay, and then you should be able to get about 600 meters altogether. Okay. Okay, so when we look at question B, it says uh, table 1 below shows the characteristics of four types of uh, sound waves that can be used to determine the thickness of the layer in the oil. This is what we want. Lah. Okay, and so when we talk about determining the thickness, uh, most important thing is that we have to differentiate this between determining the depth of the sea. Okay, so the depth of the sea, you want the... Uh, you want the the wave uh, to be able to penetrate far lah, okay because it has to go through the bottom of the sea lah. so uh, this is a very important thing lah. okay so for determining the thickness of the layer of oil what you will need uh, is low frequency waves okay and of course high energy and both serve the same purpose actually 
because uh, you want to penetrate a short distance. You don't want to go all the way into the rock layer because that's not what we want. We want just the oil layer only. So the frequency should be a low frequency, okay, so that it can penetrate a short distance. Okay, this has to be differentiated from the sea bed. Lah. Okay, want to measure the depth of the sea uh, is different because that of the sea is very big. So you want the big frequencies to travel far. Okay, but uh, if you have a low frequency, you just want to travel a short distance, uh, the layer of oil is enough. Lah. Okay, but we need to have it to be high energy because it has to penetrate a lot of uh, stuff. <laughs> okay, it has to penetrate a lot of oil. Lah. Okay, so uh, higher... Uh, penetrating penetrating power okay so when we look at it the best answer will be s lah. okay s is the better this one okay 7.1 shows 1500 colliding etc etc after the collision both vehicles get stuck and move together so you know that this is a kind of collision uh, which is a non-inelastic collision lah. Okay, determine or uh, define momentum. Momentum is the product of mass and velocity. Okay, the principle that is involved is the principle of conservation of momentum. Okay, so calculate the velocity of the van and the car after the collision. Uh, of course, the most important thing is you need to know that uh, there is a negative sign involved here because the velocity is going towards the left. So this one, the momentum, okay, is 15 times uh, 1,500, uh, which will give you, okay, uh, so it will give you 22,500, and then this will be 20 times 1,000, uh, which will be 20,000, but it will be negative. Okay, so the total momentum is actually just 2,500 to the right. Okay, and since both of these are colliding together, so their masses will combine together. Lah. So it will be 2,500 and then times V. Okay, so you get V equals to 1 meter per second. Okay, to the right. I think that's the most important thing. Lah. Okay, so it will be 1 meters per second to the right. Okay, but if it's positive 1, so it's fine. Lah. Okay, so the engine jet, uh, sorry, jet engine of an airplane uses the principal conservation momentum to produce a forward thrust. You have three different types. So uh, I think if you've done this question before, you kind of know where this is going. Lah. Okay, you want to have uh, a big, uh, air opening okay so they can take in more air you want to have a big combustion chamber and you want to have a small exhaust opening okay and of course you want to have uh, titanium blades lah, because titanium blades is uh is uh doesn't rust easily if it is iron it iron rusts easily yeah? so obviously when you look at this uh, then you know that R is the best. Lah. But let's take a look. Lah. So the size of the combustion chamber is big. Okay, big size combustion chamber. Uh, so that uh, more combustion okay, can occur. Okay, another alternative answer is uh, you can do more fuel and be burnt. Okay. The size of the exhaust opening, okay, which is the one, it should be a small uh, exhaust opening. Okay, and the reason for this, uh, hold on now. Uh, the reason for this will be uh, you can produce a bigger momentum backwards. Okay, or uh, a high speed exhaust gas. Okay, either one of these uh, would be fine. Lah. A high speed exhaust gas. So then, of course, based on this, your answer, the best answer is R. Lah. 
Okay, but since we are doing here, you might as well just this one lah. Okay, so why titanium blades? Uh, because it lasts longer. Okay, it doesn't rust easily. And then, uh, of course, we want to have a big air intake through the big opening so that more air lah. Okay, or specifically more oxygen. Okay, can be. Uh, more oxygen can be. Uh, can enter. Okay, the engine. So, I mean, since we are doing this question, we might as well just refresh this. Lah. Okay, we use titanium because it lasts longer, it doesn't rust easily. Um, big air opening so that more oxygen can enter uh, the engine. Okay, so this next question is a diagram 8.1 showing two photographs of the Tacoma narrow bridge. This obviously has to do with resonance. Okay, so the first question is, what is the meaning of resonance? Huh? So resonance is a vibration, okay, caused by an external force. Okay, that has the same natural frequency and oscillates with a maximum amplitude. Okay, of course, the key words, uh, <coughs> uh, the key words for all this is the external force, same natural frequency, and then, of course, oscillating with the maximum amplitude. I think uh, a lot of people always lose marks here because they forget the word uh, maximum. Okay, next. Uh, based on this, you are given the frequency is 19 uh, and then the, sorry, frequency is uh, 0 0.6 and then the wave speed is this one. So calculate the wave for the wind. Of course, nat naturally, we go with the wave equation. La. V equals to F lambda, 19 equals to 0 0.6 times lambda. You get lambda equals to 31.67 meters, about. Okay, about this value. La. All right, then we go to this question. Diagram 8.2 shows two app. Uh, two shock absorber springs in the suspension system okay and uh, or on a motorcycle okay then uh, using this one this one then you want length for spring so of course you will want a short length for spring okay because uh, and this is very normal elasticity question huh? so you have a short length for spring usually you have higher spring constant okay or usually the spring is harder. Lah. Okay, hard spring. Oh, sorry, actually the word is not hard, it's stiff. <laughs> we shouldn't use the word hard. Lah. Okay, uh, stiffer spring. Okay, so these are the usual ones. Lah. Okay, the number of oscillations produced while receiving a shock should be smaller. You want less lah, because you don't want it to have shock and after that you boing, 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 boing. No, you want it to quickly, quickly go away. Lah. Okay, so there'll be less vibration. Okay, or smaller frequency like, because this is usually uh, to do with the number of oscillations. Huh? Okay, then of course the type of material for the spring uh, usually is steel or some hard metal uh, also can. But usually we use steel, uh, especially for like motorcycle, this one. Okay, so you can give a number of reasons for this. Uh, one is uh, it can be strong. Okay, another one, it uh, also can be a high spring constant. Okay, uh, usually uh, those kind of answers are kind of the standard ones. Lah. Okay, now we come to the final question, uh, which is this one. So, diagram 8.1 shows a ship in front of a cliff. Ship sounded the horn and the echo was heard 9.4 seconds later. So, once again, uh, this question again, uh, the one that involves the ever-famous formula. Lah. They state the wave phenomenon involved uh, in the situation. Of course, we're talking about reflection. Okay, so determine how the echoes, sorry, explain how the echoes can be used to determine uh, the distance. So it's two marks, so usually when I have two points. La. Okay, so um, when the wave reaches uh, an obstacle, is it an obstacle? Sorry, this is a cliff. Okay, so we don't say an obstacle. Uh, we say when the wave reaches the cliff. 
okay it will be reflected okay and then after that uh, the time uh, to receive the wave is used in the formula d equals to vt over 2 to determine the distance this is obviously a four mark question that has been compressed into two la. okay uh, because usually the four mark question now will be okay first you send the wave and then uh, it will be reflected and then there's a receiver that receives the wave so the time taken will be recorded and then after that the formula used uh, will be the fourth the, the, the fourth point la. okay but uh, this is the basic idea. Lah. Okay, send the wave out, reflect back, the receiver receives it, record the time, and then you calculate by using the formula D equals to VT over 2. So the ship is 1,600 uh, meters from the cliff. So you're given the distance already. Okay, so calculate the speed, which is the V. Lah. So D equals to VT over 2, you get 1,600 equals to V. The time is given 9.4 seconds. Okay, over 2. So you calculate, calculate this, you get V equals to 340.43 meters per uh, second. Okay, then diagram 8.2 shows a dolphin using wave to detect its prey. Oh, wow. Uh, okay, so of course the type of wave, uh, of course it's a sound wave. Lah, but we need to remember that there are three types of sound waves. So there is the normal sound waves that we can hear, okay, that humans can hear. And then there are the sound waves that are beyond our hearing. So one is infrasonic, okay, and then another one is ultrasonic. I think ultrasonic is the one that we're more familiar with because uh, of ultrasound and everything. But infrasonic has a, has a bigger wavelength, so it can travel further. So like elephants and uh, owls, okay, when they communicate, they use uh, they send out infrasonic waves that are much 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 bigger wavelength lah. okay uh compared to uh, the normal sound wave so because of this the type of wave that we want to use is the ultrasonic wave okay and for the usual two reasons you will say is because it has a higher frequency Okay, and generally when we say higher frequency, it also means it has higher uh, energy. Okay, but I don't want you to confuse this uh, with the oil question just now. Okay, it doesn't mean uh, that if a frequency of uh, a wave, uh, a certain wave is low, uh, means that it has low energy. La, or if a frequency of a wave is high, means it has high energy. La. There are a number of factors la, that you need to consider. You cannot, you cannot equate it la, with or high frequency, high energy. Although generally, yes, you can say it. Okay, but not every situation, like the one that we saw just now, we chose a low frequency wave because we wanted to penetrate a short distance. Okay, but we still have to choose high energy uh, because, you know, it has to penetrate through oil. Uh, in, I mean, it has to penetrate enough. Lah. If we choose low energy, it cannot even penetrate the oil. So, uh, we cannot always equate high energy, sorry, high frequency waves with high energy. Of course, in this case, we can because, uh, number one, we're talking about sound waves and they're traveling through uh, almost nothing. <laughs> okay. Secondly, the frequency of the wave should be high. Okay. Uh, so that, and this is always seems to be the pair, lah, okay, higher energy or it can propagate, propagate further, okay, because we want to use it to, uh, to do this one, lah, to, to be able to detect the prey, okay, all right, I think that's it for our uh, videos this round, uh, Maybe after the trial exams, I will do a couple more videos for other things. Alright, take care everyone.